Okay, let me tell you about best laid plans. I am a little bit annoyed right now. It's not serious, but it's a little bit annoying. I worked so hard yesterday because I decided that this Sunday afternoon, I was gonna come home and take a nap. I was gonna relax because we had a really, really busy week and with gardening and everything, it's been go, go, go for months. And so I was like, you know what? Here, you need to go out, go out. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get, like, I'm gonna stay up. I'm gonna work so hard Friday and Saturday so that everything is ready and I, and I don't have anything to worry about Sunday. My house is clean. I even scrubbed out the fridge. The girls cleaned their rooms yesterday, not just their usual pickup, like we deep cleaned them. There, I, I'm not gonna say there's not any dirt in my house cause it's an old house and something's always dirty, but I even like washed the wall. I wanted to come home Sunday and be like, you know what? There's nothing that needs my immediate attention and I'm not gonna feel overwhelmed by all the things that are to do. Like all the laundry is folded and put away. I'm actually caught up on the laundry. There isn't any laundry other than what was created when they got changed this morning. Like I did my work. But guess what happened today? I got home from church and, you know, I got my comfy pants on and I did my checks because, you know, you always got baby animals and little animals. I always want to make sure everybody's okay. This stupid fence, which read 14 yesterday night, is only at a three, which isn't going to keep anything in or out. So now we're going to walk the fence really quick and see if we can figure out why what went down. Cause if that much of a drop, either the fence went down somewhere or something fell on the fence, but can't just ignore this. Like you can't say, oh, I'll deal with it tomorrow. Cause if you do that, right, you'll have no animals to take care of the next day. So we're gonna go walk the fence real quick and uh, be a little bit annoyed by it. We're gonna figure out what's wrong. And then we are actually going to go pick up Micah. She just went home with a friend after church today. And that friend has a little uh, cow operation and we're gonna go buy some meat from them because support local farmers right and I'll show you what I what I'm gonna get from them and uh and update our pantry a bit so first let's solve this annoying problem okay first step obviously we unplugged the fence and then we're just gonna go in and check the connections from the charger to the fence and those looked good so now we're gonna walk the line and look for anywhere the fence fell down or maybe something fell on it there's a few little twigs I mean these aren't very big that's not gonna make a huge difference but we'll take them off anyway and it really looks, as we look across the back of the first paddock, like everything looks really good. The fence is pretty tight. There's nothing down. There's nothing laying on the fence. So this obviously isn't the problem. Fortunately, even with the fence really low, nobody tried to get out today. So this is our gate system into the second paddock. It's the cheapest way to do a gate. It's not always the best. You can see right here, this could be a problem. That string is touching the fence post. So we'll make sure that's out of the way. And then the bottom, it looks like the string's just kind of hanging out a little too close to the fence post. So we'll make sure it's wrapped nicely around the insulator. That should make a small difference, hopefully. And then we're going to start walking along the sides of the second paddock. There's a spot here. It looks like the fence popped out of the bottom rung. So we'll put it back in. And it looks still pretty low on the ground there. And that's the problem. It fell out of the bottom rung here too. So we'll pop it back in. That'll make a difference. When you touch the ground, you can short out and just keep walking. Everything's looking pretty good. This might be a problem here too. We had a storm, blew some trash into the paddock. So we'll get that bucket put away. But also the girl's play chair here from their little house blew into the paddock and that's leaning up against the fence. But actually with the chair being plastic, it kind of works like an insulator. So it's probably not really affecting the fence that much. We have another twig down and there's one at the bottom too. So we'll pull those off. Maybe this is a just a situation of a lot of cumulative little problems turning into a big problem. So we'll see what it looks like when we plug it back in, say a quick prayer, and nope, that's definitely still not hot enough. So we unplug it again, and this time we're going to trim around the bottom wire here. So I could go get the weed eater, but by the time I got it gassed up and started, it would take just as long as it is to just trim this short little line here with scissors. These are where the grounding rods are. It's obviously way grown over. So we're just kind of trimming the grass around to make sure none of the grounding rods are covered, and somehow that made it worse. Final thing is to walk, plug it in, walk it, and listen for thwapping sound. Which I did hear a sound and then I turned it off. So obviously I touched the fence there and came back to where I heard the right sound. Here. There was a small string and it was touching the post. And when we plug it back in, 
Uh, there we go, 12.3. That's what we want. That will keep everybody in. Unfortunately, that took almost an hour, and I lost all my nap time. It's now time to go pick Micah up. She was visiting a friend this afternoon, and also that friend's family raises cattle, and we're going to buy some meat from them today. We made it home. Did you have fun? Yes, I went on a horse ride, went to the creek with swimsuits. <laughs> Even though it's 55 degrees out, she splashed around in the creek. There was so much aloe and a little bit of moss. <laughs> yeah, it's probably kind of gross. Do you want to take a shower? Okay. I probably do because last night I went in the water and never washed my hair. Well, then you probably do. Mom. And Nanny Banani came along just for the ride. Mom. Yeah. What? Are you gonna Are you gonna cook dinner? Yes. I don't want to go tomorrow night. Tomorrow. I'm cooking yes. dinner. Micah is in charge of dinner. We're trying Monday night. Micah Monday nights. Micah plans the menu and cooks dinner. What's for dinner tomorrow night, Micah? Um, we're doing the sausage and cheese in there. The bratwursts, yeah. And we're doing mac and cheese and mm -hmm. some uh, cooked veggies. I got this idea from my friend because she said that her family takes turns making dinner, and I want to try to do that. Okay, Can let's we get, we'll try it. Mom, give mom a break, wink, wink. <laughs> wink, wink. I think mommy will be helping, but I think you'll do a good <laughs> job. Okay, got our big bag of meat. So I'll show you in case you're curious. Typically we buy a quarter of a cow that we spread out over the year. Um, we really only do beef like once a week. So and we do some meatless meals. So we don't need, even though we have, lot, we have a lot of people to feed, we don't need that much meat. But because we raised lamb this year and a goat, we don't need nearly as much. So I just bought a hundred dollars worth of meat from her today. So that got me lots of ground beef and I think there's four or five roasts in here. So compared to the grocery store, it's about the same. It's about $4 a pound. But this is a simple way I can support a local person and a friend. Um, I would love to support more local like farms and businesses. It just gets way too expensive compared to the cost of feeding from the store. Um, so sometimes there's only so much money to go around. You gotta kind of pick and choose which areas you're gonna try to support locally and which areas you just Got to give up and go to Aldi and Walmart. So, but this with our meat, we either, for most of our meat, I either raise it or we buy it from our friend. So that's one thing that we do that we keep it really local. But like right now the dairy and stuff is just so expensive. We do all of that at the store. I just cannot afford to buy local raw milk. It would cost three times what it costs to get a gallon of milk from the store. All right, let's unpack all this meat. I have baskets in the deep freezer. They help me keep types of meat organized. So all the ground beef goes up at the top. So it's easy to find in all of our goat and lamb and chicken we have in here. These roasts are huge. I had to make a little room in a basket, but we got them in there. It's a nice addition to our freezer pantry. And on Sunday nights, I do not cook. We always do either frozen pizza or leftovers on Sunday nights. While I can never take a whole day off of being a mom, I can reduce as much of the burden as possible so I can have a somewhat restful afternoon. So on Sundays, I don't do any cooking. We eat processed stuff or pre-made stuff and I take it as easy as possible. Okay, finish up real quick for dinner here. We're gonna make sure that fence is still hot. Oh yeah, good. Okay, well, I didn't get the nap I was hoping for today, but at least this evening, the, on Sunday evenings, the girls get to watch TV or use tablets or kind of whatever they want to do. There's not really any rules. They just have to keep themselves busy. And so that way I can get a little mental break. So I'm not gonna get a nap, but I'm still gonna we'll have an easy dinner and then I kind of get the night, night off from mom duties a little bit at least, um, maybe. I'll read a book or something, do something I want to do. So uh, thanks so much for watching, guys, and we will see you all soon.